What's up, pals? It's our pal here. We're going to do my first gaming review today. And we're going to be looking at Marvel's Avengers, because that just came out. So we're going to give that a shot and see how things go. But before we get too far into this, um, I just want to say, if you want to see me play any other games, do any other reviews, go ahead and let me know down below in the comments below. And if you're not subscribed, you should do that, because that would be cool. So, let's talk about the Avengers. Uh, huh. So, let's get into the gameplay. That's the first thing that we should talk about because this is a video game and that's what people buy games to do is to play them. So, let's talk about that. So, <clears throat> the controls for this game are pretty standard for this style. Um, in that, you know, like you have a light attack and a heavy attack and you have some special abilities and each hero has their own unique abilities as well as like what is called the intrinsic meter that offers to some heavy attacks and other abilities specific to each character. Um, there are also heroic abilities, which are like abilities on cooldown. You have like technically an ultimate, there's some air quotes there, as well as two other abilities, one that's more of a support ability and one that's more of like a, an, a raw damage output ability. So in that sense, it's, it's kind of a cool way, um, to show how each hero, what each hero brings to the team. And in theory, these mechanics should be fine. But I think that um, even with all of these unique abilities for the heroes, the combat just feels kind of generic. And one could argue that this is kind of expected in this style of game. But I feel that games today should be striving to be innovative and stand out from others in their genre. And I don't think that the combat or the gameplay in this game really does that for me. Um, now, there is a skill tree in the game that gives you other abilities and buffs to your characters, so that could help with uh, giving some variety to the gameplay, but I only really played the main campaign. I did some side missions uh, that are required for the game, or for the main campaign, as well as other si side missions outside of that, just to see if I can't get a multiplayer match, which we'll talk about later, but the skill tree gives you the option to add more abilities to your characters, which is nice, gives you a little bit of variety, but you don't get enough time with each character to fully fill that skill tree in on the main campaign. Um, in fact, I think that, you know, some characters, there's just no possibility of doing that unless you take extra time to go through and do all of the extra side missions before completing the campaign. And even then, I think that you still wouldn't have enough. A lot of these characters, you don't really get till until you get closer to the end of the game, so uh, it just kind of feels like a hit and miss with the skill trees. I feel like that the gameplay could be better, but because we don't get characters soon enough and the campaign is relatively short, uh, I just it just doesn't quite work for me. My other issue, <clears throat> as far as controls and mechanics in the game, is the lock-on. Um, this should be a really useful tool in the game, because it allows you to prioritize targets and kind of keep your screen focused on that target so that you can use your special abilities and not necessarily waste them. <clears throat> but the lock-on doesn't necessarily work how it should be, how it is intended, I would think. Um, when you look at games like Dark Souls, their lock-on ability is pretty standard. Like, whatever you're looking at, the lock-on fits to. And when you're switching, it's, it's relatively easy to do that without having to reset it. Now, my issue is is that, number one, when you're looking at an enemy and there's a group of enemies around them, you don't always lock on to the enemy that you want. And maybe that's just user error, but I just had a hard time using lock-on in general. And the, also, uh, the other issue is that the lock-on is kind of not... Uh, I don't want to say that it's not visible, but it's harder to see than it should be. Um, something as simple as, I don't know... It's just kind of hard to explain without seeing it. The two rotating red circles uh, oftentimes blend in with like some of the enemies. Um, sometimes it's super visible, sometimes it's not. You never really know who you're locked onto until you can verify that you see this. And with it being difficult to see, it's just difficult. The other issue is, is the target switching. You would think that the lock-on would switch to things within your line of sight that you can see, but... My my experience with the lock-on mechanic was lackluster in that 
I would switch targets, but it would switch to an enemy that was behind me, one that I couldn't even see. So it, that's just kind of an issue when you're you you have a group of enemies that you want to prioritize, and you have a hard time locking on to one specifically, or even switching to the one because it, if you're surrounded, you're just gonna look all around you instead of at what's in front of you, and that, that's kind of problematic. The combat is also... It's very rinse and repeat. Um, I don't know how else to put it. Uh, there's not a lot of variety in enemies. Like what, Once you get probably about a third of the way through the game, you've seen most of the enemies that you are going to see for the rest of the game, aside from like adaptoids and stuff. Um, and even when, like, later on in the game, they get a shield, and that's, like, your variety on that enemy. And basically, it's just, like, okay, here's a group of them, beat them up, you know, and, okay, that's fine. Sometimes you have, like, small objectives that you have to do, like, Jarvis has to hack something, or you need to control an area for a certain amount of time. And even then, it's... <sighs> It's just kind of tedious, and I could break down the issue with, like, the objectives. Like, not so much with the Jarvis stuff, but with, like, the controlling an area. They don't give you a large area to hold down, so if you're playing a highly mobile character, or if you're trying to move around and evade and you step out of it, you're no longer controlling it. It's kind of just frustrating in that aspect, but the combat just, in general, feels repetitive and boring. And there's only six bosses in this, and... Four of them are standard fights. The other two are kind of like situations that you would expect the Avengers to handle together, but they're just kind of boring fights. Like you just destroy parts of a robot and then you you focus on one thing at a time. I, I feel like that's probably the best way they could have done boss fights like that, but also it's just kind of boring. And I feel like the main campaign just did not have enough bosses. And we'll get to like more of that in the story section of this review, but... The bosses, there could have been more. And also, I since I did only mainly play the campaign, I, I can't say for sure that these are the only bosses. And there could be more that I'm maybe missing, and if there are, you could let me know in the comments. But, it's just kind of like a lot of go beat up a bunch of like grunts, not enough like high-octane fights like bosses. And I would have liked to see more of that in the main campaign. Um, and this game seems to be geared towards multiplayer and not necessarily geared towards strictly single player as far as the main campaign is concerned. Um, I like this to an extent because it's it's like it seems like it could be a good game to play with your friends. But uh, you are limited if you're playing by yourself. Um, and what I mean by that is... Uh, generally when you play a mission, you can you could do a couple of things. You could just follow the objectives and finish the mission as fast as possible. You can also explore, which is how you find loot. But the problem with that is that some of the best loot you can get is in, uh, like, locked rooms. And oftentimes they're relatively easy to get. Like, you just have to punch some switches or shoot some buttons. Other times you have to smash them. And not every character can smash through these windows or these doors. Uh, which... From a lore perspective, sure, that makes sense. So, like, if you're playing Black Widow, yeah, she can't smash through the door. But if you're playing something like Captain America or, like, Iron Man, and they can't break through a door so you can get that loot, it's just kind of frustrating. Um, so, not all of them being able to do that means that you have to focus on playing one of these heavy-hitting characters in order to get that loot if you're planning on playing this by yourself. And as far as the gear system is concerned, such as like the loot that you get from the game, uh, it, it's it's interesting. I like it to a degree because it adds to the character's melee and defense, and it's a fairly simple. Where like you can just equip all of the best gear with a touch of a button. You don't have to s sit there and search through that. Um, but not being able to get the best gear in some missions because you want to play a specific character in that mission that's frustrating um <clears throat> other than the combat though there is some platforming but with how the camera works from time to time it's not exactly easy to do and i don't think that that's really a skill issue it's more of like how the camera functions issue 
<clears throat> and then there's also like puzzle switches or a door puzzle doors that you have to you know like like I mentioned earlier with the high gear loot situation you have to punch switches or shoot them or throw your shield whatever in order to even access those areas that's not a big deal that's just kind of something I noted about it um so because of the generic nature of the gameplay and the issues with getting loot and the lock on I'm gonna have to give the gameplay a four out of ten it was commendable to a degree in that it functions well for the style of game, but it kind of falls short in practice and innovation. And just like the limitations you have when you want to play a specific character, but you can't get all of the loot you want if you're playing by yourself. So, with that being said, let's talk about the multiplayer. Um, and honestly, I wish I could say more about this. The reality is, I just could not find a multiplayer match. After multiple attempts of building up the queue for the online features, as well attempting to start a quick play, which allows you to join somebody else's mission, um, I could not find a game. So I can't fairly critique this aspect. Though, from what I understand, the <clears throat> multiplayer is very similar to the single player, so it's going to have a lot of drawbacks there. Uh, so it very easily could have gone with a 4 or 5 just based off of how the online aspect may have affected it, but since I couldn't experience that, or even find a game, I'm going to have to have it score lower by default, which would be a 3 out of 10. So if you had a, a chance to experience the multiplayer, please let me know below in the comments. Now the story is probably where this game shines, if we can even say that at this point. Uh, it's an Avengers game, but it is more so a coming-of-age story for... Kamala Khan, as after she's exposed to the Terrigen Mist on A-Day, she feels isolated and eventually finding and reassembling the Avengers, as well as becoming one herself, kind of, is like the main gist here, without giving too much away. I like this because I'm a fan of Kamala Khan as the new Miss Marvel, and it kind of also follows some of the tropes of the movies, showing that, like, you know, they're not perfect, they don't always agree, uh, they fight sometimes, and they have to deal with their failure, you know, Stuff like that. But, so all that stuff's fine with me. Uh, I think it's pretty standard for a story like this, especially with comic book characters and such. Um, but, there are only a few issues I had with the story, so let's kind of talk about those. So the first issue is that it's kind of slow to get into. It takes you a while to meet all of the Avengers in the game. Uh, and I know that kind of lends to the gameplay aspect as well, but... Uh, you know, with the situation presented in the story, you would think that you would have uh, a shorter period of time in assembling everybody and a longer time of, like, kind of coming together and maybe giving us some more exposition as to what was happening and stuff. But, and that's kind of like my other issue with it is that it takes a while for thing for you to assemble the Avengers. So, a lot of times it's just kind of like one or two Avengers at a time doing a mission. Sometimes you do solo missions. Um, and that kind of just drones on a little bit. So, um, maybe it adds to the character development to a degree that is true, like, specifically with, like, the Hulk and Iron Man. Um, but we don't really get a lot of backstory about what happens with Thor. We don't get a lot of backstory about, well, we can infer what happens with Black Widow, but uh, Thor is the main issue here. We don't really get anything about him, um, about what he was up to, and that's kind of an issue and I would have liked to see some more about what happened in those five years with each of the heroes. Maybe at least even if it was an exposition or like maybe a, you know, like a cutscene or something just to give us like an idea of what happened with our heroes. Um, finally, the last thing that I had an issue with here was the villains. I thought that MODOK was awesome, Abomination, and Taskmaster were great. And I feel like Monica wasn't quite as interesting as... We don't really get her motive as much, except for that she's just kind of like a mad scientist, which I, I guess is fine. Uh, my main issue is that the developers kind of really missed a huge opportunity here to include a lot more of the... Maybe not a lot more, but some more of the rogues gallery for the villains of the Avengers. Um... I think it would have added, you know, like, first of all, like I mentioned with the gameplay, we could have had more boss fights, uh, you know, gave us something to look forward to, added some interest to the game, and maybe even added to the replay value, because maybe, you know, one of them are 
difficult to fight against and learning to fight against them is exciting. I don't know. Like, just some, like, s stuff like that. I just felt like we could have had more than what we got. And there very well could be more in the additional missions and stuff. Maybe there will be some uh, down the line, but... I, as far as the main campaign is concerned, we could have used some more villains or, you know... To give us some more interest in that story. Um, and they don't have to be crazy villains, right? Like, if you just added, like, Baron Zemo or something, maybe, maybe like, Hydra's interested in acquiring some Adaptoids and, like, we gotta take them down. I don't know. These are just some theories that I'm throwing out there. You don't have to get crazy with them, but just to have some additional, like, characters that we recognize would have added some value to the game. So overall, I felt like the story was serviceable that in that it felt like an Avengers story, but it could use more villains and not just that are not just unique to AIM, but unique to the villain roster of the titular team. Um, there were there very well could be more to this game. Um, maybe one, if I ever get around to finishing the secondary missions and such, there could be some more. But since I'm only considering the main campaign, I'm going to give the story a seven out of ten. So the graphics, the graphics were not too bad. At least for, at least they, I would say they're the average for games these days. Uh, the environments were, were well done, especially outdoor areas such as like North Pacific Northwest and stuff. Uh, I think it was one of the better aspects of the gameplay. A lot of things looked pretty slick, I would say. Uh, characters design and the way the game looked as you played wasn't bad either. Uh, some of the character models were a little bit off, but that could just be because, you know, I'm used to the MCU versions. And it seemed like they were trying to go for that to some degree, but then not totally. It was It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird to explain, but uh, I'm not going to hold that against the game too much. So I gave the graphics a 5 out of 10, just because I felt like they were pretty average for where we are with gaming as a whole. Now, I have some miscellaneous details that I'm also going to rate here. Uh, I'm not sure if it should even get its own section, but I think it's worth noting, because it, it brings something to this game that usually should come with a game like this, um, which is kind of like the cosmetics and the skins and the stuff that you get in the game. So the skins are awesome. I'll just say that. I thought they were great. Um, the other things you could get were like additional finishers. You could get like emotes, name tags, or like name cards or whatever you want to call them. Um, but to me, that stuff is kind of like more geared towards, like, the multiplayer aspect, like, oh, look what I got, you know, like, with the emotes and stuff, the skins are cool, which, is, that's about all I can really say out of it, so for the miscellaneous details, we're gonna go ahead and just say it's a 6 out of 10, mostly because, you know, the skins are cool, and that's about where I sit with it, so all in all, this is a 5 out of 10 game, or if you like the SAR system, it's a solid 2 out of 5, so it's it's not top-notch by any means. Um, I feel like the main story could have used more boss fights with villains we know, and that the gameplay provided more to offer. I thought the graphics were okay, and I really got into the skins. Um, but with no luck at the multiplayer, I don't get to show off these items that I've earned, or you know anything like that. Um, so I don't, pl I don't recommend that you go and pick this up at release, or right now, actually, since it's already technically released. Um, I feel like it's not quite worth the investment there, but if you could pick this up on a sale, maybe talk your friends into getting it so you can experience the multiplayer without having to wait 10 minutes to try and find one. That's probably the best way to go about it. But yeah, I just don't recommend picking this up right out the gate. So that's what I got for my, Revenge, uh, for my Avengers review. Let me know if I missed anything uh, down below in the comments. And, you know, we'll see you guys later. Spread the love and peace.